Wow, this is incredible. So when you pulled these out of the safe, were you at first thinking, okay, these gotta be valuable or were you just completely? He, he, he didn't really care what the value was. To him, it was the yeah. collection. John never wanted to sell his cards. Like he said, you can sell them when I'm dead or you can bury them with me, but you're not selling my cards. I think this summarizes John better than anything else. He puts his own driver's license oh. in sleeves. I told you not to look at those. The history of sports cards goes back over a hundred years. We are on the pursuit to find the biggest and most interesting sports card collections across the United States. Join us as we travel the large interstates and the narrow unpaved roads in our journey to continue chasing cardboard. So we are here out in the DC area, just popped into Fairfax to grab a coffee. Uh, we're excited, I'm visiting a friend of mine, PJ, who owns a shop called Collectible Kings. Uh, happy to be out here supporting him. But we got a great lead on a collection out west in West Virginia that we're gonna go explore tomorrow. It has the potential of being something pretty special on the vintage side of the world. So really excited to be here. It's a beautiful time of year to be in this area. So let's go explore. Okay, so we're finally here in Winchester, Virginia. It is late at night, but PJ was kind enough to bring his team in and give us a little private tour of his new facility here at Collectible Kings. And his store looks outstanding. He's gonna tell us what's going on there. So let's go check it out. Yeah, late night seek beak. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Yeah. This is sweet, dude. Yeah. What's going on here? What, uh, what am I looking at? Well, main this, room, showroom. This is the castle. This is the retail side of Collectible Kings here. And do you have a crown that you wear when you give a tour or is that? I have a crown, but it only comes out at Black Friday. Well, <laughs> San, instead of Santa Claus, it's Santa King. Oh my goodness. That's you, right. You're really living this up. Yeah. You got the team here. Yes. So Brandon, he's my business partner. Cool. We got Tyler. I like the name. And we got British Tom. This is the say, largest you know, Funko Pop selection I've ever seen. Funkos are actually really popular in our shop. Uh, we sell it right at retail. That's kind of our whole motto, really. Yeah. Uh, obviously, stay the hobby. A lot of people think that the market's falling and so forth. I think really it's a correction towards maybe focusing more on true collectors, in a sense, rather than people thinking that this hobby is solely for investing. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. Uh, I think you could still make obviously money on buying the right cards and so forth, but I kind of like seeing a more focus on collecting the players that you like, maybe long, more long-term holds. So I think right now, if you take a look at three or four years ago, even at this current market, the hobby is definitely up with how many people are in it. So here we call this a collector lounge. So this is probably one of the larger areas that you'll find in a hobby shop that's dedicated to just people sitting down, ripping packs, boxes, going through the five and below, like your value boxes here, or just hanging out. So not just for like sports car collecting or anything like that, but you know, if somebody's into magic, they'll actually buy like magic product and then they'll just come in here and start playing against each other. We just had this built in September and this is our whatnot streaming, our break room. So this is where we run all the breaks at. So actually if we're live during the day, We'll turn that light on. A lot of people actually respect that and they kind of quiet down, don't play the foosball as much. And then if they wanted to, they can actually look through the, the bar windows here and they can watch what's going on. Uh, yeah, we have a ride on here, everybody. <laughs> Professor Oak and the Executor. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be good at a Pokemon stream that time. <laughs> I actually started listening to Ty's podcast when I was getting back into the hobby. Uh, and then now being able to create a relationship with him is kind of kind of crazy to be honest um, I reached out to him one time before uh, we started talking and Now I think our relationship is pretty awesome. I can contact him Ask him any questions. We shoot text back to each other So just having him as a resource and hobby has been great for me, and it's also a lot of fun We're actually cheaper than Walmart or Target um, because Walmart especially, because sometimes they don't go by, they go a little bit higher than SRP sometimes. So for us, it's more about, you know, if you're running a business, it's more about volume, selling the product, but also yeah. giving a fair deal to everybody. Because in our business, it's really about residual purchases. Yeah. 
repetitive. So we want people to stay in the hobby longer and to keep coming back to us and it seems to be working. Um, we do that online too, so if we have enough product to share online, we'll go ahead and do online drops. So we'll be shipping stuff to like, uh, we got a customer in Hawaii that we ship stuff to, California, everywhere. everywhere. So it's kind of cool to have that aspect of the business as well. It's always good to be on the road and connect with friends. You know, we're out chasing cardboard, getting to do all the fun stuff. But when you get to connect the dots of the community that a lot of times starts on social media, it's great to connect real faces, real people with those, those emojis and those screen names. And you don't really get to see who they are until you really shake their hand and talk to them. PJ exceeded my expectations and his team was outstanding. So really fun night tonight at Collectible Kings. Are you looking for a new way to buy sports cards? Something a little more exciting? Well, go try something called Loop. Loop is an online marketplace dedicated to sports cards where you can buy sports card slabs, you can buy singles, you can buy packs or breaks, all of it on one app, one website called Loop. Stop being boring, go try Loop. And the best part is you get 30 bucks if you click the top right corner and use the Chasing Cardboard link. It is an awesome experience, I guarantee you're gonna love it. Now, back to the show. We're going to the farmer's market, why not, right? We're here, farmer's market, we can grab some fresh produce to make ourselves some dinner tonight. Okay, so it's early morning here at Berkeley Springs. We just had a great breakfast, uh, grabbed a coffee at the Fairfax Coffee Shop. We're just kind of walking around, checking out coffee shops and antique stores and really killing some time because we're gonna pick up Mike here in a little bit. He's over at the Chantilly Sports Card Show and then we're gonna head out to see a collection this evening. So hopefully you like the vibe here at Berkeley Springs. We really do. So this is George Washington's bathtub. There's little fishies swimming around there. Probably whole families of fish that have been around since late 1700s. It's good enough for George Washington. It's good enough for us. So this is spring water right from the mineral spring underneath us and if you kind of walk around you see all the little inlets of the water coming in yeah the uh, berkeley springs website it'll tell you like hey city water you can come fill up your jugs here and we've just sat here for five minutes and we've seen people walk up with five gallon jugs gallon jugs just filling it up for their house it's pretty cool this spring is pumping in a thousand gallons a minute that's an insane amount of capacity this this spring is pumping in pretty cool So we're in Berkeley Springs, uh, we're killing some time. We, it's like a Hallmark city. Everything you see around here seems fake, including this mall. But we haven't seen any sports cards yet. We're gonna keep hunting. Here we go, Robert Griffin III. Makes sense, we're up in Washington. If you don't follow him on Twitter, well worth the follow. He's actually, uh, he's, he's pretty entertaining. More popular now on social media than he was when he was playing. <laughs> So we're digging through some Life magazines here. This is just totally obscure, but I thought it'd be cool to, I should probably look up and see what Life magazines are popular in the sports world. Marilyn Monroe, 1952 mint condition. Queen Elizabeth, 1953, extremely rare. Hairstyles, poodle versus the horsetail. Which one do you like? All right, so April 13th, 1962. This is the one that has the mantle and the Roger Maris in it. 62, April 13th. All right, so we couldn't find the mantle, the Maris. We couldn't find the Queen Elizabeth. We found the Monroe, but I don't know, 60 bucks, I'm not interested. Um, put that back. You know what, I might grab a parting gift for, for Mike, see if I can find his birth year. What year was that? It was 40, 46? Okay, so we're headed back to Winchester, Virginia to grab Mike. Mike's actually being dropped off at Collectible Kings. We're gonna meet halfway and bring him back to Berkeley Springs. Uh, we're gonna actually go to see the collection tonight from Harland, uh, 
John, somebody who passed away, left a collection to, to Harlan, and we're gonna see that tonight, so we'll bring him Mike back to do some prepping. What's up? What's up, man? Long time no see. I know, I know. I need to grab some supplies. All right. That. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. All right, balancing act. You got all your cardboard? Got it all. All right, man. PJ, seriously, awesome. man. Thank you so much. Check them out, Collectible you. Kings. PJ, right. got some yeah. good stuff going here. Back on the East Coast. Come see us. That's right. See ya. How's it going? What's up? Thanks for making uh, the drive. Danny Black, friend of mine, Hello. friend of the show, and his son, Connor. Connor, you want to say hi? What's up, Connor? How was the show today? Good show. Best card you pulled. Or I guess you probably bought some cards, right? Um, PSA 10 Rainbow Charizard V9. Bam. I don't even know what you just said, but it sounds really good. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. Chantilly is awesome. <laughs> nice. Good stuff, man. Thanks for the drive. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Okay. Hey, I'll talk to y'all later. Looks like you got some supplies. Are we going to see some cards? I sure hope so. I sure hope so, too. <laughs> We are four minutes away from Harlan. Nice. And his whole crew. It's taking us the back road here. I like the back roads. This is gorgeous. We've seen so many good cards. I almost feel like maybe the eye appeal was texted to us and shown to us, and maybe the rest of it's not as good. There's no way it can be as good as what he sent us. There's just no way. That's the way I feel. Yeah. So I'm preparing to be kind of like, let's level set and lower expectations really quickly. It's fun to see this and come to a different part of the country that we don't get to go to very often. Yeah. I mean, it's been really cool so far. It should be up on the right, 228. How come I'm always the navigator? What is that all about? You're the Robin. To your Batman, I see. <sighs> Great. Robin it is. You ready to roll? Excited. I am too. It's gonna be good. Hey. Harlan, what's going on, man? Nice to meet you, Todd. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, This Mike. is Mike. Nice to meet you, Harlan. Awesome. <laughs> I know you guys. I see you all the time. <laughs> I watch you. You don't watch me. <laughs> well, awesome. Morning. Thanks. All right, cards are in here. Mantle and Ruth? <laughs> Mantle and Ruth, yeah. And Satchel Page? We got Hank them all. Garrett. Oh, goodness. We're about to have some fun. All right. Yeah. Are we well, sitting down? Are we going through these? Yeah, we're all ready. Let's go through it. Yeah. Yeah, we're so going through these. These are the kind of the better stuff. This is the stuff he kept in the safe. That mantle's not just the exhibit there. This one. Oh, this one. Oh, oh this is the Ruth. This oh, is the, the postcard. Yeah. So this is the dad's cookie mantle. Look at those two together. Which these are, there's usually a staple on these, right? You were they talking were about stapled. this one. There's one right down here. These were stapled to the cookie bag or whatever yeah they were a can a Canada issue somewhere in, in northwest Canada or something so I get an email from Harlan a number of weeks ago reaching out saying he had watched the show he had a situation where his father-in-law had passed away he needed some help trying to figure out what all he had what he should do with it how he should take care of liquidating it and getting rid of it to help out his mother-in-law yeah limited number of these but well, they actually meant that back then <laughs> when we when we pulled those out I just thought it was an exhibit card. Didn't think much of it. And my wife turned it over and she's like, what is all this? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, because exhibits are only blank back, right? Correct. Yeah. And I don't know if they bought exhibits and then printed those or if they had them printed and redone. I don't, I don't know how that issue went. Probably just a licensing thing. Probably. Honestly. Um, there's a Jackie, 48 Leaf. 49. Thank you. It's a good thing we have the vintage expert here yeah. with no, us. He, you know, we came in here thinking we're gonna be doing a lot of educating, and we did a little educating, but Harlan had his ducks in a row. Not only had he researched cards and the process, he had values kind of in the back of his mind. He was naming off cards that we had to look up. And there was a couple moments there where Harlan corrected Mike. And I'm gonna be honest, that gives me a lot of joy. I learned it all from you though, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is incredible. So when you pulled these out of the safe, were you, were you at first thinking, okay, these gotta be valuable, or were you just completely well, obviously ignorant I, to it at the point? I knew they had some value. Okay. He, he was aware that they had some value, um, but the values changed obviously a lot in the last few years. 
he, he, he didn't really care what the value was to him. It was the yeah. collection and it was, yeah, and he was trying to get types like they weren't, I mean, obviously these conditions aren't wonderful, but right. he didn't care. He did, probably he did not care. The condition was never an issue for him. It was having the card. You know what that is? Comes out of a cigarette. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's pretty rough. It was mean, probably just an advertisement cool, you would get from buying a pack of cigarettes or a carton or something like that. Yeah. Super cool, Jackie. I, I, I mean, I've looked it all up. I've watched you guys on YouTube a million times, trying to, uh, to figure all this stuff out. Um, so. uh, oh. Mama. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mama Mia. CBS. He watched a game on CBS? I, I, yeah, there's a, there's a couple of them marked that way. I don't know if somebody was marking their cards, you know. So, you know, most of the Hall of Famers have multiple T206 cards. They'll have right. a portrait, right? And then some type of quote-unquote action shot. And this is Cy Young. They call it bare hand shows because mm -hmm. it's bare hand shows. Um, I think the portrait is in here as well. And the portraits are more sought after okay. Oh, okay. by a lot of people like that. Oh yeah. So there, yeah. The so you got two Cy Youngs, portrait, action. You, Old Mill, I think is a common back. I'm not, so T206 is. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that are, oh, that's sorry. their thing. You got some Ginters here though. Oh yeah, they're nice. Those I like those a lot. <laughs> yep, there's some. I think there's John Clarkson, Hall of Famer. John Montgomery Ward, Hall of Famer. Wow. Those are both Hall of Famers. Uh, that's gold coin or old old gold coin, something like that. There should be a couple more. Dude, I'm gonna I'm call. Gonna oh my gosh, I got people to. <sighs> Harlan. Yeah. Look at that guy. This guy's name was Frank Baker. Mm -hmm. You know what his nickname was? Nope. Home run. Home run. Frank Home Run Baker. Really? And the most home runs he ever hit in a season was like 12 <laughs> or something. <laughs> because in the dead ball era, they just didn't hit a whole lot of home runs. Right. Uh, he actually played with Ruth at the Yankees, I think. Okay. Gotta look that up. But It's been great watching uh, Mike and Ty's enthusiasm for for the cards and just kind of geeking out over the cards. And you know, Mike sitting down with my kids last night and telling them all the stories about the cards and why this one is, is worth this and this one's only worth that, even though they're you know, cards right next to each other. Just going through the Hall of Famers and everything. Uh, but it's been wonderful. Joe Tinker, oh my gosh. So who did, who did John collect? I mean, who was his guy? Yeah. Infatuated with all of his cards. So his collection was, was um, a lot of unique type cards and and things like that. If he saw something I've never seen before, he's like, "Yep, oh. dig it." Oh yeah. Yeah. He would uh, we go to, to shows and he would go walk the show prior to it opening, and just anything he'd never seen or something that he thought was rare or unique or interesting, he just bought it. Sorry, I, I'm trying to listen and, <laughs> and, and not, also not get too excited. I'm just flipping through like five Bay Bruce and then multiple T205, T206, Ty Cobbs. Yeah. The Tharps ice cream, Ty Cobb and Bay Bruce are in there. I mean, just casually. And all ungraded because he thought grading was, was dumb. How come you're getting all the good stuff first? I don't <laughs> I understand mean, how this, this is, is crazy. working. How is this working? Oh, that's not good stuff? Yeah. No, okay, come on, fair now. enough. Touche. John had an incredible eye for collecting. You could tell he was just one of those guys who knew what was cool. It's awesome to see that. This is mind blowing. It almost is surreal. Really? It really is. Like you, and you see all this stuff all the time, but not all together right. in see. one big box. So John never wanted to sell his cards. Like he said, you can sell them when I'm dead or you can bury them with me, but you're not selling my cards. And then he found out he had cancer and uh, he set us all down. He's like, hey, while I'm still here and still able, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna sell some of the stuff. We're gonna get it ready. At least you'll have my knowledge. We'll know what every, you'll know what everything is. And then a week and a half later, he just got so bad that he couldn't get out of bed. He had, uh, he had skin cancer a few years ago and um, they didn't know it at the time, but it didn't metastasize and got into his lungs. He wasn't a smoker or anything like that, but lung cancer was the, ultimate what ultimately killed him um but he he was um bound and determined to never sell the cards like you know they were his cards he understood that you know they were an investment for his kids grandkids whatever he's he's fine with it now i'm sure but he never talked about selling them while he was alive until a few weeks before he would take us to the basement you know i'd been down there a few times he'd open up the safe and he'd pull them out and he would 
he would say, you know, this is a turkey red, a T3, these, these are 19, you know, whatever. And he would talk about all the players, Tinker, Evers, Chance, and all the, the poem and all that kind of stuff. So he would impart some of that knowledge through the cards. I think he knew what everything was. Like, you know, he knew it was a T207, brown back or whatever. He could, have, he could have told you every card, but I don't think he had any idea what the current kind of market was for, for those cards. Because when he collected them, they were inexpensive. Hmm. We saw Babe Ruth cards with $85 written on the price tag, you know. Um, what, so when, when he said that and he said, you can sell this potentially, what did you think, I'm not selling it? Or was it like, you know what, I think we have to sell it and, and why? It wasn't about that. The money wasn't the thing for him. Like, you know, you see these cards, some of them are really rough. It was about having the card, about the collection. He liked the story of the collection. He liked telling where he was and who he was with and how he got it and how he, you know, got a deal or, or whatever. There was always that part of it. And oh, by the way, here's, you know, the 52 Mickey Mantle. So it wasn't the collection here, it was the collecting. It was actually going out and acquiring the thing, going to the shows, going to the flea markets, yard sales. I remember we used to go to yard sales all the time and uh, slurpy discs were really big at the time. A winter storm in summer, a cold front in a cup at 7-Eleven. Below freezing predicted, Slurpee takes the simmer out of summer. Curious, bold, rare sensation. It'll freeze your pipes. And now at 7-Eleven, you can get a Slurpee in a surprise cup. 24 ounces of your favorite Slurpee flavor. And there's a surprise on the bottom of the cup. You get a different surprise with every Slurpee surprise cup. Pretty sure we drank enough sugar that summer to <laughs> fuel some bad health habits. Uh, we would go from one end of town and have a Slurpee and drive to the other end of town and have another one. And uh, he was... Just so he could have those So he could have Slurpee, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He would have my grandma sit the night before and go through the newspaper and she would have um, a paper tablet and it would have the addresses of everything that we had to go to. Like there was the go-to stops and uh, we always had a lunch break and then we, we went right back out to yard sailing after the lunch break. Her dad was always a collector from an early age. Uh, he got it honestly from his grandparents and great-grandparents. Um, collected a little bit of everything. Well, and I think one of my best memories is that we were, we were always kind of a part of dad's collections because we went to yard sales and ball shows and train shows. Like one time, I want to tell a story. We were at Ollie's at, in the middle of yard sailing and he saw the big bobblehead of the Ollie guy and said, I want to buy that. Can I buy that? And the people working there said, no, no, it wasn't for sale. But it was like a little thing that they had out, like uh, advertise their store. And he tried to buy it because it was a bobblehead. He liked bobbleheads, he liked everything. One of the best parts about the cars that we get in consignments is that we get to put them in our eBay marketplace. And the best part is eBay now provides a service called the eBay Vault that allows you as a buyer to go take these cards and put them in your secure environment. So if you're looking for cards and you want to put them in a vault and you're thinking about maybe selling those cards in the future, take advantage of the eBay Vault. Lower transaction costs, low friction, and an ease of transaction that doesn't exist anywhere else. Go find these cards and put them in your eBay Vault today. Click the link in the top right corner. Now, back to the show. I think I would have loved John so much. Like, he, I, he and I would have gotten along really well. No doubt. And I think he would have loved your show. Like, he would have loved Chasing Cardboard. He'd have been a, a big fan of watching it. And you guys coming in here and sitting down and talking to him about his cards, he'd have loved that too. He might not have let you get out the door with any of them. <laughs> it Ooh. wouldn't have been off the table. It, it would have been a little different stories, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but he would have had those, those stories of where he got the cards and how he collected it and, you know, when it was or whatever. Really one of the most impressive things about this entire experience here in West Virginia was Harlan. And he had a challenge here to try to make this the best that he can for his mother-in-law. And he really went out of his way to learn information, to go search out and, and learn about this stuff. And he's really got a pretty good uh, bank of knowledge that he's acquired over the last few months dealing with this. Really honored that he called us to want to help him. And he's, he's just a great guy and a, an asset to this family. So. Harlan, what's your, what's your favorite memory that he brings up or maybe you have? 
There's a lot, because he and I did a lot together. We did a lot of train shows. We would spend a few days up there, and the memory was the dinner after the show with all of his dealer friends, and we'd go to like all you can eat crabs or whatever and just eat until you were sick, and they would sit there and just talk and how they had saw this or how they had got that. He treated me like I was his son. There's no doubt about it. Like he, from the time I started dating his daughter through the end of his life, he treated me like I was his son. I, Kate called me the other day and said, do you have that picture of dad or us laying on the floor with dad? He would have these concerts. We had one of those old console record players, the big old came in the giant wooden box and he would get his records out and, and we'd lay on the floor and listen to records. On well, my 16th birthday, my birthday's in February, so on my 16th birthday we had a huge blizzard and I couldn't go out, couldn't go anywhere, so I just cried and cried, but he had a big concert, like Sarah mentioned, um, complete with the 16 Candles song and everything like that. And it um, and, yeah, and always ended just, with Stand By Your Man. Yeah, that was well, the, the <laughs> ending song, so. Yeah. Um, you know, he did all he could to try to make that day a memorable one and I still think about it all the time, so. Okay, we're going through binders in here. They're in there still going through the you know A-list stuff. And we're going through the B-list stuff, which is just binders of just crazy good cars. Pages and pages of 51, 52 Bowman. You know, there's 73 tops. So check this out, post serial baseball. And he's got like, he's got the whole set and the mantle is right there and it looks great. So back, back when Post put these out, they were really just trying to help sell baseball cards and Mickey Mantle even did a commercial for Post. It's pretty crazy. Hey Judy, Post Serials has free baseball trading cards. Free baseball cards? Yep, one on the packages. Here's Post Alphabet. And they're also on nine other Post Serials. You just cut them out of the back. Hey, you've got six different cards on Alphabet. And here's Mickey Mantle. He's my favorite. Boy, he can really shag those flies. Well, kids, baseball season's here again. And with Post Serials baseball trading cards, you can get a rundown on all your favorite players. Out here, this was full and we've, we've gone through. We have, there's three shelves. And these, these are like the Pops Coin yeah, 64, oh yeah. 71, Serpy Discs, random baseball, football, basketball, were they always stored out here in this? Or they, you start these were all stored out, always stored out here in the, in the garage. Oh my goodness. So I assume that's like the full 1980 set, 81, 82, 83. <laughs> and these are all binders full of stuff. Desert Shield cards. Oh yeah, Chipper in there? Chipper's in there. Nolan, Griffey? No, Nolan's in there, I think Nolan's the first card. So. Yep. And there's the Griffey. Oh yeah, there's Griffey. Desert Shield were sent to the military and were really hard to find. And if you did find them, most of the time, not in great condition. So these are highly sought after. But all the sets are in these drawers. So this is the 76 tops, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81. It's all baseball. All baseball. This is all baseball. Yeah, so I think this is a factory set of 86 dollars. 86 and some of this stuff is just random. Total randomness, yeah. yeah. My goodness, okay. Well, you know what? This is actually more organized than I expected. <laughs> we spent a lot of time getting it together. Did you? For you okay. Guys. Yeah, okay. we did. Well, I'm impressed. Oh my goodness. Country Gold. Yeah. Just WCW wax. Bass Pro League. <laughs> That's hot, man. There's my, there's a Cindy Lauper that era. They produced it. There's Duran Duran wax in there and Madonna. You know Michael Jackson. Just. Yeah. They produce anything. Tops would put their name oh on my anything. Gosh. These cars are being stored and they're gonna bring somebody else the thrill of the hunt to be able to have them. And some of them haven't really been seen that often. Um, some of them are pretty rare. So I guess just, I've kind of tried to outweigh that with you know the wanting to, to keep it, that it's gonna bring others joy now that they'll get to share in it. <laughs> and I think dad would like that too. So we see all ends of the spectrum with people. Like we collections from guys who are hermits. They go in their room and they never talk about their cards. Right. And then I think the opposite end is John where this is like a conversation piece for him. It is, yeah. And he had friends in the hobby. He had a lot of friends in the hobby who he would talk to about cards. You know, some guy would get out of it and he would buy a bunch of their cards. And you know, they kind of went back and forth for a while. But yeah, it was always, always about the connections with the other dealers and the other collectors.
I mean, I don't, I'm gonna have to literally pick up Mike and take him to the car. <laughs> Can you give us the night to think through everything that we see? For sure. Come back tomorrow. You gonna be here all day? All day, whatever you need. I'm okay. here for it. Okay, all let's right. do it tomorrow. Sounds good. All right. Incredible. I mean, what a, what a family to hang out with and spend the evening with. I mean, like you said, they laid the red carpet out for us. And we got to see this just absolutely insane collection that John had worked so long to collect and curate. And he, it's just so, so cool. So we're, we're coming back tomorrow. We're not quite sure what we're going to do yet. We have a lot to digest tonight. I mean, we do a lot of we'll be up late talking tonight and that's good. Uh, and I think they are just so excited to see the next step of this collection and what it could be. And so we want to do a really good job for them, making sure yeah. we take care of it. Mike and I left both starstruck and anxious because we have to figure out how or if we can even make this deal work with Harlan and family. Now we've seen some crazy collections. You've been on those journeys with us, but never before have we seen so many heavy hitters on one table. So we're headed back to crunch numbers and game plan on how we can close this deal. So tune in next episode to see if we can work our magic. Keep chasing.